uh, today I am I am upgrading my Ugreen DXP 4800 Plus NAS unit. I have I've actually uh, really enjoyed this NAS. I, I didn't. Look, before I got this thing, I was pretty intimidated about NAS devices, network attached storage. So I've always run like a, a, a DAS, a DAS, a direct attached storage, which is, it's, it's back there. But with this thing, I've essentially created my own cloud. So anywhere that I am in the world, which is really convenient that we're doing this today, because we're about to leave on a trip tonight at like midnight, our flight's at 1 a.m. Um, but I will be able to access everything that's on here from where we're going um, because because it's it's my own cloud. Okay, future David here. Um, dude, this thing is so good. I was in Bali for six nights. We, we went to Bali. The whole time that I was there, at nighttime, like I'd shoot photos, shoot video all during the day, we'd go back to the hotel, I would upload, I'd back up all my cards to these two hard drives and then before I went to sleep, I would take everything that I shot that day and I would send it to my NAS. So all through the night and basically like the whole time that we were out the next day, cause internet at the hotel wasn't great. Uh, the whole time it was just sending all that data back to my NAS. So by the end of that trip, like six nights in Bali, I had tons and tons of data that was in my cards on two hard drives that were all with me and then in a fourth backup already back at the house. Um, dude, that, that, that is, uh, if you're traveling, having your own cloud, that's, that's pretty dope. Okay, back, back to, back to the upgrades that I'm doing today, or, I, you know, for past you, uh, I'm doing, and then the one upgrade that I do still need to do, I haven't done it yet, I do still need to do this one upgrade. So I've loved it so far. It's been, it's been really cool to have. Um, there's a couple of upgrades. Actually, there's three upgrades. One I've already done, one we're doing today, and then another that I'm, I'm hopefully going to do soon. The first upgrade that I did to it was I actually built my own 10 gig network. So in the back here, you can run a one gig port through here, or you have a 2.5 and a 10 gigabyte ethernet port on the back here. But in order to do a 10 gig network or our system, essentially you have to buy a 10 gig switch and then you run this into the switch, your, the ethernet cable from your, your router goes into the switch and then from the switch goes an ethernet cable into a, for me, a 10 gig ethernet to USB-C Thunderbolt little adapter bit and then out to, to my laptop. So I am actually able to transfer data super, super fast through this thing, which is, it's been really cool, but I've had a big limitation, which is the hard drives that are inside of here. Now, at some point I'm going to upgrade them so they're larger, but, but there's a, a big upgrade that we can do to the bottom of this unit uh, that's gonna make my life a whole lot better. And and mainly, mainly it's gonna make it, it's gonna make it faster. I need some tools. Okay, so when I am transferring data, like let's say I'm like, oh my gosh, now I have this 10 gigabit connection. I wanna send data to this really quick. Well, I have, I have spinning hard disks in here. So no matter how fast the connection is, my limitation on how quickly a file can go onto here is determined by the write speed of these hard disks. So fast connection, but but slow, slow hard drives, which yeah, it makes sense. Like you, it's not, there's no reason to put like crazy fast drives in here for the four bays, but there's two extra bays below this trap door in the bottom here and here is where we are going to add some, some memory and some storage. Okay. And what we got today is the Crucial DDR5 5600, and this is a 32 gigabyte kit, which is two 16 gigabyte uh, little, little bits there. And then we're also gonna add these beasts, which are the Samsung 990 Pros NVMe M2 SSD drives. So two terabytes each is gonna give me four terabytes of, what, what's the speed on these things? The speed is crazy. A read speed of 7,450 megabytes, which means that I'll actually be able to edit video off of this setup. Okay, so what are we doing here? What we're doing is this addition is going to make it so that this can do more tasks at once. And this addition is going to help me actually transfer data to and from this unit because of these drives. Essentially, think of them as almost like a, like a, a, a 
temporary storage when I'm sending large files across. When I send like a terabyte of data through that pipeline, the pipeline, because of the switch, is now super, super fast. The hard drives are super, super slow, but these are super, super fast. So essentially my computer will send the info to here and it will kind of like cache it almost onto here and then slowly it will offload from here onto the drives in here. So this is just gonna make my transfer speeds like just wicked fast. I'm very, I'm very, very excited about this upgrade. If you uh, haven't gotten a NAS for yourself, dude, go check out my first video on this thing. I knew nothing about NASs really, and this thing has been so simple and easy to set up and to work with. The software is killer. I've been using the phone app a ton. Oh, look at that bad boy. The 990 Pro. And again, now I'm not paying for so much dang cloud storage. Cloud storage is crazy what you can end up paying. Again, think of it right now. Like right now, I've got four four terabyte hard drives in here. By the way, that's the third upgrade that I'm going to do. I wanna put like four 20 terabyte drives in here. If we use one for redundancy in a RAID setup, then I'd have 60 terabytes. What is 60 terabytes gonna cost you on like Google Drive or Dropbox? It's gonna be hundreds of dollars a month to be able to have like cloud access to a drive like this. And I, I'm, I'm gonna do it just by building it myself. Okay, we're gonna do the RAM first and then we will move on to the, the M.2 drives. Uh, we're gonna pop out the RAM that's in there. Get that, like, oh, my finger's stuck. There we go. Uh, I think inside of here, I think we had eight gigabytes. Yeah, one eight gigabyte, we're gonna swap that out. And now we are gonna put in two 16 gigabytes. Get that in like that, and then just press down. That's it. it dude, this, this whole thing, like, so much of this stuff that I've been intimidated about, this is, this is shockingly easy. Boom, done. Okay, those are done. Now I'm gonna pull these two screws out here to get the M.2 drives in here. And uh, importantly, I have some thermal putty, I think it's called, but it basically just goes on top of the drive once we have it installed. And that is going to help keep this thing, keep these, these cards as cool as possible. Now, when you set this up in the software, what's gonna happen is it's gonna use one of these drives as a write card and one of them as a read card. That's gonna just speed things up like even faster here. And uh, same thing, we're gonna just line this up right here and get it nicely seated in there. Beautiful. Once that's lined up right there, screw goes back in and boom, we got one drive installed. Get the other drive installed in there. Beautiful. There we go. And then with these, we're just gonna peel these off and stick them onto the actual drives right on top here, just a big fat piece of thermal putty right there. It may make the door a little tricky to close here. Boom. And let's get the door back on. Dude, this is the easiest upgrade ever. The software side, uh, maybe we'll jump into in a second here, I'll talk you through it. This is such a crazy setup now, because on my desktop, again, I have it just kind of with what it came with, so I'm very small, I have four four terabyte drives in there. Again, I'm using one for redundancy. So I have 12 terabytes in here. 12 terabytes of cloud storage is still very expensive. I think on Dropbox, I'm paying for 15 terabytes of cloud storage. And in here, I have 12 terabytes, and this is just kind of my own personal storage. My own personal cloud. Let's get hooked back up. Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna do uh, my wireless connection right now so I can be over here and show you guys what I'm doing here. But essentially, if we go in here to task manager, now when I go to memory, <laughs> 31.13 gigabytes of memory. So that, that NAS now is, is uh, well upgraded. Now for my SSD cache, we're just gonna go into storage here. We're gonna go into my storage pool one, which again, 10.8 terabytes is left on here, but my storage pool one, and we're gonna go to SSD cache management. All of this is just like super simple to walk through and do. So no SSD cache right now, we're gonna create it, and we wanna do it on volume one. 
and the cache mode is going to be read write. Uh, this is an important note. If you only put one SSD drive into there, into the M.2 slot, uh, then you can only do read only, which is good, like it's gonna improve the read speed that you're pulling from the, the drive or the NAS, but when you're trying to send files to it, you want two, because now I'm gonna use one for sending files to the NAS and one for pulling files from the NAS. So we're gonna do read write cache because I've got two in there. Allocate SSD cache, uh, this is totally fine, just say I understand the risk of data loss. And then select cache RAID type, we're gonna do RAID 1, it's the only option. And then when we say select SSDs, we wanna select both of those, those SSDs. So let's click into here. Available capacity, we want we want all of it. And then at this point, it's going to format those two SSD drives. So that is super simple. Uh, oh, my password. Oh boy, do I remember my password? Password incorrect. Dude, passwords, man. All right, let's try that again. That's it. I I'm upgraded. That took me um, almost no time to do. I just swapped out the the RAM that was in there, put two RAMs in, put my SSDs in. Jumped in here, the RAID already shows up. I just jump into storage pool and do that real quick. And now I can pull data from my Ugreen NAS and I can put data onto my Ugreen NAS wickedly fast. The, 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 next, the next thing that I gotta do now is essentially just putting some big old hard drives in there. I, I'm gonna try, I wanna put like the biggest ones that, you know, but they're just, they're expensive. Hard drives are expensive, they're not cheap. Again, if I if I put four 20 terabyte hard drives into there and I was, I was getting, I'm using redundancy, so I'm losing a drive, I'm down to 60 terabytes. How much do you pay for 60 terabytes of a cloud service? Dropbox or Google Drive, any of the cloud services, how much, how much you paying for that? Dude, this is wildly exciting. Um, if you have the DXP 4800 Plus and you want to do this, I will put links to everything that I used to do this upgrade down in the description below. Uh, you do need to make sure that you have that thermal putty. It came with the NAS when I first bought it, but it does not come when you buy the drive. So if you're just buying the drive, no thermal putty included. So if you if you don't have it, like you threw it out when you bought the box, uh, make sure that you buy some thermal putty with that. But again, I will link everything down in the description, including the DXP 4800 from Ugreen, DXP 4800 Plus. It's, um, dude, it, it's, yeah. Again, I'm going on a trip in like 12 hours. We are leaving here, taking a flight, to the other side of the world. We're going to Southeast Asia and I can access everything on that drive from Southeast Asia. Um, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty cool. All right, um, any questions? Throw them down below.